Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today I am quilting on my China Plate quilt. It's on the machine and ready to go. So I want to show you the process as I go through this. For the outer border, I decided to do uh, piano keys. It's um, something that I can do without marking and I kind of need that right now because my marking tools have all gone dry. Piano keys is something I can do without marking. And so um, I'm doing these one inch apart and I started in the middle of the quilt, which is over this direction, about um, a hand's width, a little over a hand's width. Um, they're gonna be one inch apart. So I have a ruler with markings on it so that I can follow that. Now you can do piano keys with your channel locks. Um, you can do it without, you don't have to have them. And um, I've, I do it both ways. It kind of depends on how I'm feeling at the time. Uh, right now I've got, oh, a, a, not quite a dozen, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines stitched in. So um, what I'm going to do is just stitch in the ditch over an inch using my ruler to get the distance right. And there's an inch right there. Now I can put on my vertical channel lock and just zip right up. Then turn it off, go over an inch again, turn it on and then come down. One way isn't any faster than the other if I do it with just the ruler. Um, you just have to line up your marks to make sure you're you know, you're on the right spot and uh, just move over and go to the next line. So I don't know one way saves any more time than the other actually. I just, sometimes the channel lock, when I use the channel lock, if my husband is home and he's up in the living room watching TV, he says he can hear it. It doesn't bother him that much, but he, know, he knows I'm down there using the quilting machine and using my channel lock for one reason or another. So um, if he's home, I avoid using it and uh, just so I don't disturb him. But he's not home right now. It's middle of the day. He's at work. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use it. And you can pre-mark these, um, which I do sometimes. I will get my uh, designs with lines stencil out. And then I'll, you know, pounce it. And I've got my marks. One more line. I have been quilting in the second border and I have filmed this but it's not showing up very well because the print is so busy in this fabric that even though I'm using a contrasting thread it's it's just not showing up so um, I got my vinyl sheet out my tablecloth vinyl and laid that on top and got out my dry erase markers and traced it Problem is that's not showing up either because my dry erase markers are dry. So they're not, they're gone. I've got half a dozen of them and they're all done for. So I'm gonna put a piece of typing paper over this and um, see if I can just draw it out for you. And I've got a Sharpie, but I'm keeping the plastic vinyl on. So I'm protecting my quilt here. So um, we're gonna start out with a swirl come in and then swirl back out and then come in and do a feather bounce back do a second feather and a third feather and then I'm going to bounce back and now I need to carry this all the way down because I'm going to reverse this swirl now this swirl you can do it right on top of um, your previous stitching line if you want to but since that's kind of difficult to do I, I just separate it out so now this swirl is going to go this direction instead of that direction. So we're going to go up 
swirl in, come around, and then do a feather, bump back, second feather, third feather, bump back, take it back this direction, and then do another swirl. And then you just carry on. So that is the design that is going in the second border. And I'm trying to end the corner of the quilt over here with a swirl, which I was man managed to do on the top row. And then I just um, brought these feathers in like this. No, it goes this way. Bring this down and bring the feather this direction. Second and third. And then come down and then do the swirl this direction. See, my brain just not, does not rotate very easily. So um, the idea, bring this in a little bit better, is these feathers are meeting at the inner portion of the quilt, the body of the quilt. They're going this direction. So I want these feathers to go that direction here. So that's that's the goal, is to put the swirl in and then reverse the feathers. So um, it's something I have to concentrate on and with this being a really busy print, it's hard to draw anything on there and it show. Um, I used a piece of chalk, it didn't show up and um, all my marking pins are dry, which I don't think would help on this dark fabric anyway. So that is my dilemma for the day, is getting this inner border done. Well, that's my plan for the day, and it may take a while because I, I may have to do some ripping out as I go along because I already have had to do that twice. So we'll see how that goes. And then once that's done, then I can start working on the body of the quilt and getting some of the detail done. Yesterday I worked for quite a while on the design for the um, blocks in the quilt and um, I had my plastic sheet out and I was drawing on it and coming up with some designs and um, I think I finally settled on something and I went ahead and I, I took a picture of it on my phone and I don't know if you can see that but whenever I um, do something on my plastic since that isn't a permanent thing I will take a picture on my phone so that I can remember what I'm doing and um, it's not going to be too complicated I am going to have feathers surrounding the discs, uh, the plates, and then I'm going to have feathers in the um, ovals here in these pieces. And then I'm going to just do some outline stitching in the blades because I, I don't want to cover up all the pretty fabrics. And so I'm just going to do pretty much just the minimal quilting and um, I'll do that. So, um, and kind of a Greek key that follows the outline in here. So, um, this is a big space and so I've had to break it down into, um, well, into eighths actually. And um, so what I'm going to do is um, grab my arc ruler here and uh, show you Hopefully this will show up. Yeah, I think I'm in frame enough that it'll show up. Okay, um, I'm going to be arcing these uh, feathers around and we're gonna go, let's see, the feathers are gonna go this direction, but I need, I need to have um, a guideline here. So we're gonna split it here, here, so each corner and each center center is going to be split. So I can also get my straight ruler to help that out. And we're just going to go towards, there's a center guideline there and one here. 
and I have a new pen. I did finally go run to um, Joann's and got a new pen. So, and this is an air soluble marker. And now I'm not using a 45 degree angle to make sure that I am exactly where I need to be, but I can do that. Um, so let's go ahead. So anyway, the feathers are going to go like that, and they're going to be arced like this, following my diagram. Make sure I've got it, got it all going the right way. And I believe that is correct. So we're going to start in the corner, and then that is going to come out. I don't think I used when I drew this by hand I didn't actually use the arc but you know that will help but that's going to come around and it's going to end in a swirl at the end so arc out swirl like that and the feather that that comes in, up in these areas will also be a curl so um, I'm going to start just with feathers and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and draw them in. I probably will not follow right on top of these feathers when I'm quilting it because that just slows me down and my feathers tend to get kind of shaky. So we'll do this and then I'm going to just have one big uh, feather here. I've got a fuzz on there a feather here in the center instead of two small ones we're going to do one big one and then the feathers are going to come out like this and this one is going to come in and it's going to curl like that and then we're just going to follow them around and just fill in the space so this one will do the same And since this pen is air soluble, it probably will fade away before I get this quilted anyway. Um, maybe not this first one since the pen is new and I'm getting a lot of ink through it, but a lot of times, um, you know, the depending on how long you wait after you draw it on, you may lose what you've drawn in. So. That feather is going to go there, and then here we're going to do little feathers that are curling towards the center. And then we'll, I'll do the Greek key. Like that. And then everything else will just be outline quilted. So that is my plan. Okay, I'm going to do feathers in the piece block too, and I'm going to start by splitting it in half like that. And then the feathers are going to be similar to what I did in the block with the china plates in it. And these feathers are going to come in this direction. So. Let me see if you can see that. Yeah. Okay. So I've got, I'm just going to trace that for here for now. And then this one's also going to come into a curl. And then the feathers are going to build out. And they probably will be smaller than this. I'm, Depends on how I'm feeling at the time. And I kind of wanted one that will come in here and then this one would be like a curl. Put a curl on that one. And I know these are sloppy, but um, I'm just not 
taking my time with these. And so I'm going to bring the feathers up to fill in all the corners here. And then we'll have one feather here. And these feathers will come in this direction. And this one will also come in with a curl. This direction. And just fill in like that. So that's what those feathers will look like. And I'll just do the same on that side. So we'll, ha we'll have a pair. So we'll come in and end in a curl. And draw these feathers in. And let's see, this is the one I want to have a big curl, so this feather will need to be a little bit bigger. And this one will start here. This one will be the curl. Like that. So we'll have those feathers here, the cross hatch in the the blocks. So that's the plan. And now I just have to get it started. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.